Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to an ABW preview. Tonight, it is Richard joining me for the fun and festivities of this wonderful show. I had no idea what I was going to say then. <laughs> Hello. All, right? All good, my man, you? Good, yes. I'm glad that now we've got your issues sorted. If anybody else is using StreamYard and you can't get it to work in Chrome, go and use Firefox. That's what we've done. That's what Richard was meant to be on last night. Oh yeah, He's let all his, his venom out about the Watford game. He's been bending my ear about it for the last half an hour. <laughs> I, <do laughs> I, can, I can only apologise. <laughs> That's, uh, that's okay right as this is um this is arsenal um i'm track frankfurt v arsenal and we've never played before and i know very little about it so a lot of the stuff i've done here i did it using transfer market and then i sent it all to drew our oh, mate in in uh, new york and as he's a bit of a german football expert he's given me a few things i need to change so a lot of the thanks here goes to drew for putting me right on a few things including their main striker which i didn't even include because <laughs> i forgot about it right so where can you hear the game? I hear absolutely nobody asking. It is a 5.55 p.m. I've got no idea why that uh, is it. And it's at the Commerce Bank Arena. It's a capacity of 51,500. They're averaging, it says on Wikipedia, 50, but I don't think they've reached 50,000 attendance at any point during this season. So the place you can see in the UK, BT Sport Live and BT Sport 2. In Ireland, it's the same as those two, plus Virgin Media 2 and Virgin TV Go. In Australia, it's Optus Sport. Oh, Flick, I've scored 2-1. I haven't ruined the game for anyone. In Canada, it's DAZN. In the US of A, it's Univision Now, Unimass, and Bleacher Report Live. I'm not sure it's on the radio. It's probably not because they're scumbags. And today's surprise country is Germany. You can also see it on DAZN. They must have a German channel. And Teleclub Sport Live. Right, Richard. Is that, is that zone? Don't you dare. It's not the zone. There's no bloody O in it or an E. I don't that's get how it. they pronounce it. I don't. Know. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger. I am. Uh, I refuse to uh, acknowledge words when they go just to take all, most of the vowels out. <laughs> Dazone would be T H E space Z O N E. Are you watching people from Canada and Germany? Sort your lives out. <laughs> right, Richard. Do you want to do the very detailed head to head? This is extremely detailed. <laughs> so the head to head. We have not played them before. <laughs> Um, they, they drew both of their last season semi-finals against Chelsea, one-one, uh, but lost three-four on pens. Uh, and in that run to the semi-final, they won nine, drew four, lost one, which was a four-two away loss to Benfica. There you go. See, so do the last five away games as well. Uh, the last Arsenal's last five away games in Europe: one-two, uh, drew zero, lost three. Uh, we scored seven. And conceded 10 with only one clean sheet. That's not good, is it? No, uh, that is poor form. Because one of them was a 4-1 loss in the final. <laughs> no, yeah, I tried to blank that. I was going to say, like, it was, what was one of the, yeah, the final. <laughs> Try and blank it from my memory. Uh, would you like uh, to know what uh, Eintracht Frankfurt's last five home games in Europe were? Go on then, ticklers. Okay, so they've won four, drew one, lost zero. They've scored nine and conceded only two with three clean sheets. It says their last home loss was a 2-1 loss to Palermo in 2006. And they have not lost in their last 16 European games. And in that run, they have kept, they kept an almighty 10 clean sheets. That should have been home, European home games. Oh, sorry, oh, we are talking I... about home game section. I, I forgot to put it in. That's one kind of error so far. We're on one, people. Keep yeah, keep the count. There'll probably be a lot more. <laughs> uh, last season, they finished seventh in the Bundesliga after being fourth or fifth for most of the season. Yeah, like us, their their um, league form fell apart. I think they had two losses, two draws, and then three losses, letting in shitloads of goals. And I thought that sounds familiar. I was going to say. What, is, uh, is it is Emery managing them too? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, I'm joking. <laughs> oh dear. Right, injuries and suspensions. Uh, Arsenal still got Bellerin, Tierney and Mavropanos, although Mavropanos did play in the under-23s midweek, but he came off after about an hour, I think, and Holding played the full 90 minutes, so maybe he might get a game. Iron Track Frankfurt, this is a cut and paste from transfer market. Russ sent the back to Guzman, central midfield. <sighs> Gakanovic, a tackling midfield, Rod, uh, central midfielder, are all out injured according to transfer market. And all these players are ineligible. So Muller, right winger, uh, Wiedewald, goalkeeper, Doro, defensive midfielder, and Kavar, central midfielder. I didn't say why. 
So um, I will do the formations, which is the next bit, because it might make some sense because I'm the one who wrote it. So uh, there's a lot of help from Drew here. Uh, in their last, they've they've played 11 games this season. They've played three, four, one, two, seven times, and they've played three, four, two, one, four times, and they're not switching it from home to away either. I can see no reason why they're doing it. They started the season off with Rebic, who was um, as a lone striker, but now go with two up front with, how are we going to say this name? Uh, uh, Pacienza. That's him. And usually Jove Jovelic, Jove Lijic, Jove... Am I going to say that? Jove... I, I liked it. Go, go. <laughs> Jove Livic. No, Jove yeah. oh, God, I wish I'd have put his first name. As Rebic has <laughs> left, um, but Drew said that they have signed... I always go to say Das Boot, but it's Das Boot. Da it's Bastos. I go Das yeah. Boot like the film. Das Boot, a film, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> About a submarine. So, uh, yeah, he's left. But Drew said that um, Bastos is to replace him, and he has one goal in one game, so expect... Doss to start if they go with two up front with Jovi, Thingy Bob, will get minutes as he has a lot of potential. They play the Japanese bloke Kamada in the hole behind the front two. Drew, Drew also said that Dost is an absolute animal in the box, fantastic in the air, and he can cause a ton of issues. Well, yeah, and I was looking and he put some details about um, the kind of career that he's had. And I think he's scored 79 goals in 91 games for Sporting Lisbon in the league in the two or three seasons that he was there. And then he went, he was playing for um, a Wolfsburg before that. He was banging in the goals. And I think before that he was uh, maybe Feyenoord and a couple of other Dutch teams. So he, he sounds like the sort of uh, sort of striker that we cannot handle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. certainly kind does. Of striker for us. Um, they play uh, Da Costa and Costic on the wings. Drew says Costic has bags of pace down the flank and has a great delivery and can certainly bag a goal if we let him run right. That means he will run right because if he's down the left, that means he's got Maitland Niles at right back to deal with. Good luck with that. <laughs> um, and, and he will run right as he's key for them. They have had a couple of games where they have played other players out on either wings at times. Now, the midfield two is any two of any three of KOHR. I'm not going to try and say that. Cool. Sal Fernandez, but they have been played road quite a few times, but he's injured. And Toro, who has played a couple of league games, I think, is ineligible. I don't know what that word I just said. I messed that up. Um, the back three. Now, this is the, the back four, actually, has been quite sturdy. Trapping goal with Hinterega, Abraham and Hazebi have all been playing nearly every game. Whew, there you go. Uh, right, Rich, do the uh, players to look out for and try and make some content. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh -huh. uh, so, thankfully, last season's top scorer, Luka Jovic, uh, who scored 27 goals in 48 games, uh, has now been sold to Real Madrid for 55 million in the summer. Uh, their second top scorer, Sebastian Haller, scored 20 goals and was sold to West Ham for 45 million. Plus, their third top scorer, uh, Antti Rebic, who scored 10 goals, has been loaned to AC Milan. So, most of last season's danger players have gone, which is good. Uh, this season, they have won their two league home games and lost their two away league games, scoring five and letting in five. A bit of a mixed bag. Uh, in the Europa League, they have played six games. Uh, they've won five, lost one at Strasbourg, 3-0, and scored 13 goals in them in them six games with three clean sheets. Um, so the players to look out for, it's hard to judge in just 11 games, uh, but their top goal scorer is, uh, oh, mate, I'm going to butcher this, Goncalo Pacienza, with six goals in 10 games. Philippe Kostic has four goals in eight games. And Antti Rebic has three goals in six games before going to Milan. Uh, their, key, their keeper is Kevin Trapp, uh, who, has, who they got from PSG in the summer uh, after being on a loan with them last season. And he has three clean sheets in eight games so far. So I didn't realise that he was uh, the the goalie they had last season, and before PSG he was at, he was at Eintracht anyway. So he went mm. Eintracht PSG Eintracht loan, and they bought him back in the summer. So I think he's a bit of a favour there. But yeah, he's, I mean, I think he's to blame for most of the clean sheets they kept last season. I know. So what so... formation do you, would you think that? <laughs> Can I ask you to pick what formation Emery's going to go for? Good luck with that. So what would you think he's going to go for? Who that Emery's going to go for? Yeah. Uh, I I would imagine it, it it's very similar. I don't think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna go for a three. No. Um, 
Well, I'm saying that he might do to try and ease, ease if he's go, he's going to play holding mm. to kind of try and ease holding in. He could do, but he he's not. He's barely done it all preseason. Like he fairly seemed like he'd abandoned it completely. Um, but I I think he's going to go with a with a similar sort of set, uh, setup as he did um, all season with the four at the back. Maybe maybe he might go with like a little bit of a a, um, a double pivot just to give a little bit more protection in the midfield. But I think it's going to be. I don't think there's going to be a drastic change. I don't think. Well, looking at last season's um, ta- tactics, we played three four one two in the final. The game before that, we played four in, four at the back in the league. Game before that, we played the semi final against Valencia three at the back. Premier League game before that, four at the back. Premier uh, Europa League game before that, three at the back. And then we played three league and uh, Premier League games. Only one against Palace is three at the back. And then Europa League three at the back. And then Premier League four at the back, and then Europa League three at the back. So it seems the last five or six um, Europa League games we played last season, he played them all with three at the back. So um, going by what Drew has said, if that bloke is as deadly down the left flank as uh, as, I mean, uh, as he will be, I mean, what's he got? Four goals in in eight games, mm. uh, Caustic. Then it, if if he's coming down the left hand side, and we've seen what Delafoyu did to Maitland Niles for Watford at the weekend. Maybe going three would be, but they're going. That means you can have a little bit more space on either either um, fullback, doesn't it? So you might struggle to shut them down. Yeah, I suppose. So. I mean, I did. Do, I I kind of think that he's because uh, Socrates hasn't travelled, has he not? I've got no idea. I've not seen any news from today. I don't. I don't think Urzel and Socrates have travelled. Um. No. So it looks like I would imagine Chambers and Holding are going to get minutes. Um. Especially holding, I think, in the to to step up his recovery. Uh, but I mean, it's not a bad shout, to be fair, because I think I think adding adding two extra defenders in there helps out holding. Like I said, doesn't throw him in completely at the deep end, and like I said, might give um, extra protection for the uh, for the conservative. Because um, yeah, poor poor uh, uh, Maitland Niles, he had, he had a bit of a he got ripped apart by Delafay, didn't he? It wasn't pretty, and he's had one good game this season. And the rest of them have been okay, but that one was terrible. And so many teams now that if they've, because of course the uh, the Frankfurt manager will have seen our last game, and he'll, they they ruined us in uh, points. And then he's going to look at that and go, "Well, we have got a magnificent player, as Drew says, playing the, on that left hand side. Their best player for Watford, a man of the match, was De La Foy, who went down the left hand side. So you'd, you'd be crazy not to see that and go, "Yeah, we're going to copy that. We're going to do exactly the same thing." Mm. Do, do you do you think do you think he's going to risk a Bamiang up front? No, oh, he, he can't do. I don't think we're going to. I mean, I don't think we're going to win this game. I think it's going to be uh, yeah, a I big don't. struggle because they're a very decent team. We can't afford to go playing our best players. So, um, well, who else can you play? Is uh, we got the the young Brazilian kid, but he's not. It's not guaranteed whether he's a striker yet. He can still play out wide. Lacazette's injured, and who was the and Pepe, well, he's not really a striker, is he? So maybe we're going to have to play a bummy end because... Well, you've got a bit Dalek. Oh, not again. Yeah, you have. Have I, have I as well? A little bit, yeah. It's going to um, turn the football off. Maybe it's because I'm streaming football. I should, I should have turned that off beforehand. Has that made any difference? Yep, there you go. Much better. Lovely. Don't stream football. Not I was streaming. I wasn't yeah. streaming. I was watching. I was, I was watching, watching it on Teletext. Like you had it on oh, Teletext. It's fine. That's it. I was watching it on Teletext. <laughs> um, Page three. Yeah, so it's, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be. Uh, it's, we've got John Jules, and yeah, I think he scored a couple of goals for the under twenty threes recently. I think he's got four goals in five games or five goals in fours for the under twenty threes. So, but would you go and put a, a 17, 18 year old and, and let him make his European debut away in a game like that? That's, that's a lot to ask for, isn't it? Throwing him in like that. Yeah, I, do, I know there's a bit of me that I think, like I said, more thinking on it. Like, do you think what with having um, that he's going to put Pepe up there as the lone striker? Like, he's no, never but... done well, supposedly, in his career as a striker. Someone said on yesterday's podcast that the Lille manager bought him, played him up front, and he was awful. And then he moved him out to the what? Was the, that, was the, that... It is. I'm just checking here. John Jules is 18. Three goals in five games. 
And then we've got, um, I think it's Jody McEnough. Is it a Jordan? He's got no goals in five games. Uh, Martinelli hasn't played for the under-23s yet. The only other striker, according to Soccer is a 16-year-old called uh, Miguel Aziz. Um, Smith Rowe, he can't play. They're Balogun. They've got him as midfielder, but he's not. He's a striker. He's got four goals in five games. So what do you do? You, you either got to play an 18 year old kid, I could say kids, but they're not their men, John Jules or Balogun, or you're going to have to play um, Martinelli, or it's going to be a Bamiyang. But mm. that's such a hard game to go. If it was one of the other group games, or we were at home, it'd be a lot easier. But I, I think I think if the Watford game wasn't such a disaster and the, 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 maybe the bad press and the bad reaction because it's it's been very negative towards Emery. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, like I said, even me, like I said, as I vented to you earlier, I've, it's, yeah. it did not sit well with me either. Um, I think had it gone better, I think he would may have rested Aubameyang. But the, I think there's a, I think he's a little bit under pressure now. This is like I say, this is, it's, it's re- it really kicked off a notch quite a lot like i think it was for a lot of people it was the straw that broke the camel's back that not so much the result but just the the performance um so yeah i don't know i think he's he's he's, he might be under a bit of pressure i think he might have to be forced but with lacazette's injury to force to play a bamiang but there's uh, another thing i was looking at the number of our players in our squad that have played in germany Ozil has Xhaka, mustafi uh, Kalasinic, Aubameyang, uh, Mkhitaryan's gone. Pa- um, Socrates has played there. Leno, uh, Reese Nelson had, had some time playing in Germany. So there's quite a lot of our team that has spent time. Say Smith, Smith Rowe as well. Yeah. yeah, Red Bull, but I don't think he yeah. was. Uh, well, it's not Red Bull. It's Rassenball because they couldn't call it Red Bull because it's a company name. So there's uh, lots of stuff there. So if you had to, um, if you had to put uh, ten shiny pence on it, what would be your formation you'd go for? It's going to be um, Martinez in goal, isn't it? Yeah, I'd I'd have Martinez in, uh, in goal. Um, do you know? So the, the more I think of it, you know, so I didn't I didn't really set much stock into it, but I I would probably go with three at the back. I think I would. Um, just because, like I said, holding. I think he only played. Well, he played the first game, didn't he? He played against Newcastle. Chambers. Chambers. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. And obviously holding um, coming back, so I think I would I would actually go with three at the back. Hmm. Have have Louise um, in there as, as as the kind of sweeper in the middle. Because Chambers did nothing wrong in that game. I thought he was really good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I thought I was. I would. I thought he he was slightly hard done by to to not get in for the next game. Hmm. Um, but I, I, you know, Louise had to play. He had to get some minutes. Yeah. Um, he had to play against Burnley. Um, but yeah, I would, I would have, I would have. So you're saying Chambers Chambers and right? holding with Louis, the one in the middle of the, the plays middle, yeah, the ball yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, then, uh, then what are you going to do up front and then fill the middle in once we figure out how many people we're playing up front? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can I play that's all the really, of them? That's the really hard bit. I think I'm going to have to go for Bummy. I mean, we ain't got any choice. Unless yeah, you want no. to throw the game. Not that you throw the game, but you, if he doesn't play, I can't see those kids coming in and scoring. No. Like, I mean... I don't know. Do you do you, that leaves you what with four left? So I just I don't know who who you how what the makeup is that, that, that what you'd have. I'd like to see uh, uh, Torreira play or Torreira, however you. Yeah, want. Um, <laughs> I say perhaps. it different every time I say it. Yeah, how about we go with Martinelli, Balogun, and John Jules up front and just let them run everyone ragged for ninety minutes because they are all young men with mm. full of the joys of spring. I'd like to, I'd like to see Nelson get some more minutes. He was he was really poor he when he came on against uh, Watford. Yeah, well, they were bullied, um, weren't they? Yeah, he, he, he looked. F- yeah, give give Willock the um. He's not the elder, is he? He's the middle the middle one, isn't he? I don't know which one he is. I know his his other two brothers. One's at West Brom and one's at Gillingham now. Mm. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah Willock. I'd 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 go with Willock as well. Um, yeah, I, I'd I'd want mobility. I want I don't I don't, I don't want Jack. No <laughs> I, want some, I want some pace and some power, please. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to to again go with Gwenduzi as well. Gwenduzi Torreira, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, Willock. Yeah. So, so that is now seven players we've got. So that leaves me. 
Sorry, my brain's gone into meltdown. Um, I'm, I'm probably picking 13 players, or I'm going to pick eight. Yeah. It's one or the other. I'm not going to pick a proper 11. So yeah. um, I'm just thinking. Would, just trying to think. Like I say, I'm going to write it down so I remember uh, what I've really picked. Old school so, tactics. So we've got Martinez. We've got Martinez in goal. Chambers yeah. holding Chambers, and Louise. Louise holding. And then we got Conservative Torreira. on the right. Uh, Kalasinac, because you got to. Yeah. Torreira. So you're going to give those two uh, a free, more of a free role to be more yeah. winning than, yeah. Yeah, because I think it suits both their games. Yeah, um, it you can't offers, ask them to defend. No, <laughs> offers them protection as well. That's three, four, five, three, six, four, five, six, seven. So we're going to have... Uh, I've lost count already. Well, <laughs> I think this one's right. before and picked 13 players. Yeah, well, I've, <laughs> I think we have. What a shambles. <laughs> we've, I think we've we've tried to pick like 17 players. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got two more. So, that's so if, be if we go three in midfield, yeah. we can go two more. So we're going to have um, one playing up front on his own like a bum young and then maybe have one playing off him. Or are we going to go with two up front? See, where you got to put Stick Sabios in there as well? What about, you know, again, I, I think he's another player who needs minutes. Needs. Well, let's, just, let's just stick um, a bummy up front and Sabios playing behind him. Would that work? So I've, no, I've, completely, I've, I've, I've taken out Willock. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. I've <laughs> gone for a double pivot of yeah. Barrera and Guendouzi with Sabios. Yeah. Um, just behind... Let's just say we just have a Bamiyang and Pepe up there just to oh. for pace on the break. Well, there you go. If you want to go on your way to work tomorrow, go and drop that in at, at, at the Unleashed Highbury at the Emirates. Say, address it yeah. to the attention <laughs> of Emery. If they can fax it over to him in Germany in time, there you go. We've, we've picked 14, 12, no, 10, 7, we've picked 11 players. <laughs> I'll, I'll open the letter with good evening. Oh. Hopefully it'll get to him. Yes. Well, there you go, people. We have we have solved the Arsenal tactical problem. Now you can see why Emery has so much trouble. When English is our first language, we can't even get it right. <laughs> it's, it bodes well for my uh, potential coaching badges, doesn't oh, it? Oh, dear. Yeah, well, because we've got so many players that can't play. So what's your prediction for this score? I I'm I think we're going to... Uh, I think we're going to lose, unfortunately. Unless they sneak twelve players on, like we picked. Unless, yeah, unless they, they <laughs> yeah, hopefully they, they you know, you wait for uh, deduct them uh, points because they're they're playing with thirteen players like we tried to do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I just I have a bad feeling. Hopefully we're switched on. Um, hopefully the mentality is right, and like I said, we go out there and be professional because we we should be able to, to we should be able to beat them. They, like I said, their form. As we read out, is is just as patchy as ours. They've lost quite a lot of um of the bulk of their their main stars. So you know we shouldn't be frightened of them or go in there with any trepidation. We should be go in there, impose ourselves, make sure that we don't allow them to play and play our own game. But you saw you know, the game against Watford, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm projecting. Yeah, I think I'm, you're it's, hoping. It's, it's what I want to happen. It's like, you know, what I want them to do. Yeah, I I I am gonna go no, I'm gonna be positive. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna be positive like like uh, what Jason always espouses when he asks you to tappy tappy. Three one <laughs> Arsenal. Oh, I'm going the exact opposite. Three one to them with Das Boat getting a couple of them. And <laughs> uh, we're Boak. gonna we're gonna completely fall apart. I mean I think the best we can hope for is a draw. If Chambers and Holding and Louise work well together, but I just don't. They have such a great home form. Their away form is rubbish, much like ours. But we're away and they're at home, so I'm going the three-one win to them. Sadly, but I think that'd be the only time we'll lose a group game. And I think we should go on and win all the other group games, hopefully, and see lots of our youth players getting yeah. a chance. So um, especially, especially in the home games, we, you know that that's going to be the time I think for the Nelsons, the Martin, Martinelli's, the the Smith Rose, the Sackers. You've, you've pluralised all of those players when there's only one of each. Unless there is a Smith Rowe watching, then hello. <laughs> <laughs> right, so tomorrow's night's lineup is going to be Jason Carl and John. I shall be around, but I won't be on the show. And uh, thank you very much to Drew for your help with doing this. Very kind of you, mate, as always. And thank you much to Richard for joining us for this. Uh, this we've been talking now since about, what, 20 past eight? It's been about like an that, hour and a half. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sorting out my stupid computer. Yeah, no, it's not you. It's the software. So, um, 
yes we will see you tomorrow night about 10 minutes after the game live i won't be there so expect technical difficulties. no john's there there will be no technical difficulties john will get it all done now this is the point where i click end broadcast and i have to go and press another button Do you got any final last words to say richard uh no that's that sorted <laughs> goodbye bye <laughs>